Good day, students. In this lecture, I will be talking about the important laboratory technique, which is DNA sequencing, or the method or technology that is used to determine the order of the four bases of DNA, which are adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. Also, the different techniques of DNA sequencing will be tackled. DNA sequencing is a laboratory technique used to determine the exact sequence of bases in a DNA molecule. The DNA base sequence carries the information a cell needs to assemble protein and RNA molecules. DNA sequence information is important to scientists investigating the functions of genes. With this, DNA sequence information is used in the medical laboratory for a variety of purposes, including detecting mutations, typing microorganisms, identifying human haplotypes, and designating polymorphisms. Treatment strategies, including targeted therapies, are now selected based on the results of DNA sequencing techniques. This lecture will focus on the following DNA sequencing techniques, as well as the different platforms or formats under it. This discussion includes four major techniques used to determine the nucleotide sequence of DNA. These are direct sequencing, pyrosequencing, bisulfite DNA sequencing, and next generation sequencing. So now let me start with the first major DNA sequencing technique that I will talk about, that is direct sequencing. When we talk about direct sequencing, it means that the letters of the genetic code or the different nucleotides are read directly as if reading the sequences using a magnifying glass. Direct PCR sequencing enables rapid and precise determination of sequence identity and variation, which is useful in most aspects of molecular biology and for diagnostic genetic applications. Direct determination of the order or sequence of nucleotides in a DNA polymer is the most specific and direct method for identifying genetic lesions or mutations or polymorphisms, especially when looking for changes affecting only one or two nucleotides. Under direct sequencing, the first format that I will discuss is chemical sequencing or Maxim Gilbert sequencing. This format was developed in the 1970s by Alan Maxim and Walter Gilbert. This technique requires a double or single-stranded version of the DNA region to be sequenced with one end labeled with a radioactive dye. For sequencing, the labeled fragment or the template is aliquoted into four tubes. Each aliquot is treated with a different chemical with or without high salt. The figure on the right shows how the labeled fragments were separated into four aliquots. The aliquots are treated with either dimethyl sulfate, formic acid, hydrazine, or hydrazine with a salt solution. Chemical sequencing proceeds in four separate reactions in which the labeled DNA fragment is selectively broken at specific nucleotides. Upon addition of a strong reducing agent, such as 10% piperidine, the single-stranded DNA would break at specific nucleotides, as shown in the table on the right of the slide. After the reactions, the fragments were separated by size on a denaturing polyacrylamide gel. On the right is a figure that shows a sample of Maxim Gilbert sequencing results. The gel is red from the bottom to the top, and the size of the fragments gives the order of the nucleotides. The nucleotides are inferred from the lane in which each band appears. When a band appears both in the G and G plus A lanes, the nucleotide present is guanine. Cytosine is identified from a band that appears in the C plus T and C lanes. Meanwhile, 
Thymine and adenine nucleotides are inferred or identified when a band appears in the C plus T lane and G plus A lane, respectively. The next direct sequencing format that I will be talking about is dideoxy chain termination sequencing, otherwise known as Sanger sequencing. This format is a modification of the DNA replication process. Manual dideoxy sequencing requires a single stranded version of the fragment to be sequenced or the template. Sequencing is primed with a short synthetic piece of DNA that is complementary to the basis just before the region to be sequenced. For detection of the products of the sequencing reaction, the primer is attached covalently at the 5' prime end to a radioactive phosphorus or a fluorescent dye. In Sanger sequencing, the sequence of the template will be determined by extension of the primer in the presence of dideoxynucleotides or DDNTPs. Just as in the in vivo DNA replication reaction, an in vitro DNA synthesis reaction would result in polymerization of deoxynucleotides to make full-length copies of the DNA template. For sequencing, modified dideoxynucleotide or DDNTP derivatives are added to the reaction mixture. Dideoxynucleotides lack the hydroxyl group found on the 3' ri ribose carbon of the deoxynucleotides. DNA synthesis will stop upon incorporation of a DDNTP into the growing DNA because without the hydroxyl group at the 3' prime sugar carbon, the 5' prime 3' prime phosphodiester bond cannot be established to incorporate a subsequent nucleotide. The newly synthesized chain will terminate, therefore, with the DDNTP. The components required for DNA synthesis which include the template, primer, enzyme, buffers, and DNTPs are all mixed with a different DDNTP in each of four tubes. With a proper ratio of DDNTPs and DNTPs, the newly synthesized strands of DNA will terminate at each opportunity to incorporate a DDNTP. The resulting synthesis products are a series of fragments ending in either adenine, cytosine, guanine, or thymine. The sets of synthesized fragments are then loaded onto a denaturing polyacrylamide gel. The products of each of the four sequencing reactions are loaded into adjacent lanes labeled as A, C, G, or T corresponding to the DDNTP in the four reaction tubes. The four-lane gel electrophoresis pattern of the products of the four sequencing reactions is called a sequencing ladder. The ladder is read to deduce the DNA sequence. From the bottom of the gel, the smallest or the fastest migrating fragment is the one in which synthesis is terminated closest to the primer. The next major DNA sequencing technique that I will be discussing is pyro sequencing. This is a method of DNA sequencing that detects light emitted during the sequential addition of nucleotides during the synthesis of a complementary strand of DNA. Pyrosequencing is an example of a method designed to determine a DNA sequence without having to make a sequencing ladder. This procedure relies on the generation of light or luminescence when nucleotides are added to a growing strand of DNA. With this system, there are no more gels, fluorescent dyes, or DDNTPs involved. The pyrosequencing reaction mix consists of a single-stranded DNA template, a sequencing primer, sulfurylase, luciferase, and the two substrates, adenosine 5-phosphosulfate and luciferine. So you will see the functions of each of the following components in the next slides. So for a more detailed explanation about pyrosequencing, the method starts off with the addition of one of the four DNTPs to the reaction with a template. In the presence of polymerase, 
The primer is extended with the formation of the phosphodiester bond between the DNTP and the primer. When this happens, pyrophosphate or PPI is released. The analysis of the pyrophosphate released is the basis of pyrosequencing. The released pyrophosphate will serve as a cofactor for ATP generation from adenosine 5-phosphosulfate or APS. Luciferase plus ATP converts luciferin to oxyluciferin with the production of light which is detected by a luminometer. The system is regenerated with the apparase that degrades residual free DNTP and DATP. As nucleotides are added to the system one at a time, the sequence is determined by which of the four nucleotides generates a light signal. The results from a pyrosequencing reaction called a pyrogram would consist of peaks of luminescence associated with the addition of the complementary nucleotide. If a sequence contains a repeated nucleotide, the peak height of the specific nucleotide doubles. The nucleotide sequence is called based on the order of nucleotide bases introduced to the sequencing reaction and the peak heights. The next DNA sequencing technique that I will talk about is bisulfite DNA sequencing. Bisulfite DNA sequencing, just like pyrosequencing, is also a chain termination procedure that is used to detect methylated cytosine nucleotides. That is why this method is also known as methylation-specific sequencing. Methylation of cytosine residues to 5-methyl cytosines in DNA is an important part of the regulation of gene expression and chromatin structure affecting cell differentiation and diseases including several types of cancer. The principle of this technique relies on the ability of the cytosines to be deaminated and be converted to uracils when added with bisulfite solution, whereas the 5-methyl cytosines remain unchanged. Bisulfite DNA sequencing starts with the fragmentation of DNA molecules using restriction enzymes. The restriction digestion products are resolved on an agarose gel, and the fragments of the size of interest are purified from the gel. The DNA is denatured with heat and exposed to bisulfite solution, which is composed of sodium bisulfite, sodium hydroxide, and hydroquinone for 16 to 20 hours. During the incubation with bisulfite, the cytosines in the reaction are deaminated, converting them to uracils, whereas the 5-methyl cytosines are unchanged. After the reaction, the treated DNA is cleaned, precipitated, or purified by adhering and washing on columns or beads, and resuspended for use as a template for PCR amplification. The primers used for amplification are altered to accommodate the cytosine to uracil changes in the primer binding sites caused by the bisulfite treatment. The PCR applicants are then sequenced by Sanger sequencing or pyrosequencing. Methylation is detected by comparing the treated sequence with the original sequence and noting where in the treated sequence the cytosines are not changed to thymine or uracil. In this example of DNA methylation at cytosine residues detected by pyrosequencing, the top panel contains the original sequence showing the cytosine residues that are still not methylated. After the procedure, Pyrosequencing show the bisulfite treated sequence in the bottom panel with the methylated cytosine residues. Only one cytosine residue appears to be unmethylated. Now, let me talk about next generation sequencing. At present, genetic variants in an organism's genome have been acknowledged to be involved in certain disease conditions. That is why, the identification of these genetic variants is important for diagnosis, prognosis, and treatment strategies. Although microarray techniques were applied to this type of analytical application, they cannot provide a relevant genomic scale sequence data with single base pair resolution. 
This is the reason why next generation sequencing came into existence. Next Generation Sequencing, or NGS, also called Massive Parallel Sequencing, was designed to sequence large numbers of templates carrying millions of bases simultaneously in a run that takes a few hours. NGS technology has achieved gigabytes of sequencing data for a minimal cost, making genomic studies a routine component of both research and clinical analysis. NGS requires novel methods of template preparation, powerful computer data assembly systems to organize the massive amounts of sequence information that are generated, strong computer support as well as terabytes of storage space to accommodate large raw data sets, and an interface with laboratory information systems and electronic medical records. In this lecture, I will be discussing the four different but related platforms or formats of NGS. The first format is ion conductance sequencing. For ion conductance sequencing, indexed libraries or collections of DNA fragments to be sequenced are amplified using primers that are immobilized on microparticles or beads in an aqueous oil emulsion using adapters on the library fragments complementary to the immobilized primers. The beads carrying the applicants or sequence templates are placed on a solid surface uh, such as a gene chip. The captured fragments are then subjected to the addition of nucleotides in a predetermined order. If the nucleotide is complementary to the sequencing template, DNA polymerase will catalyze the formation of a phosphodiester bond. A hydrogen ion is released upon formation of the phosphodiester bond. The hydrogen ion will lower the pH of the reaction by a specific amount that is recorded by the sequencer. Another NGS format is reversible dye terminator sequencing. In reversible dye terminator sequencing, Captured or amplified fragments are hybridized to immobilized primers on a solid surface known as a flow cell. The fragments hybridize to the immobilized primers and are amplified by branch PCR into collections of products known as polonies. The polonies are sequenced in place by the sequential addition of fluorescently labeled nucleotides. If a nucleotide is complementary to the template next to the primer, DNA polymerase will extend the primer to form a phosphodiester bond. An image is taken of the flow cell after each nucleotide addition or cycle, recording the presence of each added nucleotide color and location. After imaging, the fluorescent dyes are removed and the next nucleotide is added. This is the summary of the entire reversible dye terminator sequencing procedure. Labeled nucleotides are applied to the flow cell and incorporated into growing chains by DNA polymerase at each polony location. Images are taken after rounds of fluorescent nucleotide addition, and the color at each polony location indicates the next nucleotide in that sequence. Once the image is taken, the fluorescent labels are removed. Following this, another round of nucleotides is introduced. Sequencing by ligation, which is another format of NGS, is used in certain research applications. Sequencing by ligation uses short fluorescently labeled oligomers that hybridize in short increments if they are complementary to the DNA template. The template DNA anchored to a glass slide is flooded with fluorescent labeled oligonucleotides. If the oligo is complementary to the template, it is ligated and then two bases are detected at a time. The oligonucleotide is cleaved, followed by the next round of ligation. Lastly, we have nanopore sequencing. Nanopore sequencing has the advantage of not requiring fragmentation and amplification of the template DNA. One strand of long double-stranded DNA molecule is drawn through protein pores. 
Each nucleotide is identified by a disruption in current as it passes through the pore. Each nucleotide passing through the pore changes the current in a characteristic way. This sequencing is rapid and does not require reassembly or short fragments for the final sequence. This ends my discussion on the different DNA sequencing techniques. Our next topic will be about bioinformatics and sequence alignment. Thank you and have a good day everyone.